Hi, welcome to the channel. I'm JJ Atkins and this is JJ Atkins Art. I do a lot of digital art using the Procreate app and this one in particular is a little bit of a departure from my normal series of caricatures that I uh, tend to draw. This one I'm calling Dan Bandana. He's an original character, kind of based on that 80s glam rock era. So let's kind of break this one down. So as I mentioned, Dan Bandana is an original character, but he is loosely based off of kind of a mix of a bunch of 80s glam rockers that cropped up around the West Coast on the Sunset Strip in the uh, 80s. Think like Poison, Guns N' Roses, White Snake, you know, these, these heavy metal hair bands. And, and the big thing about this is, is that this is a departure from what I usually do. I usually uh, focus more on caricatures of real people Whereas this is something of more of an original character, even though it is meant to be reminiscent of a couple of people that really do exist. So, um, you know, maybe think of like a, if, if Brett Michaels and Axl Rose got together and had a baby, this might be something of the result of it. So it's meant to remind you of some people, but not necessarily look like any one particular person. Now, what I'm trying to do here is really just kind of, you know, harken back to a day where, 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 where these 80s bands and, and, and front men kind of all dress the same. They all have these certain tropes that they kind of went into over and over and over again when it came to their style choices and, and, and things of that nature. So when I started this piece out, I started with like a list of things that I wanted to include in this character. Things like ripped jeans, uh, uh, tattoos, um, chain wallets, uh, uh, wristbands that have uh, you know like metal studs on them things like that um, t-shirts with the sleeves torn off but the big thing was the bandanas I, I couldn't get over when I was doing the research how many of these people had bandanas tied over every aspect of their body whether it be a bandana tied around their arm or their thigh their head around their neck bandanas everywhere and suddenly I came to this realization that this character was just gonna be called Dan Bandana and I was just gonna try to squeeze in as many of these tropes but particularly the bandanas <laughs> as much as I could now um, this is something of a more cartoony take rather than a more photorealistic take on, the, on, on a character, but I think it still works because of the amount of detail that was kind of packed in here, and, and, and we'll speak to the details when we get a little bit further into the piece. Now again, the idea here was to bring in as many of these kind of like 80s tropes as I possibly could. So as I'm designing the character in some of these rough sketch elements, every time I do like another sketch to kind of refine the drawing, I'm adding in a little bit more detail, another, another one of those little things that are so reminiscent of the 80s. So it, it's a little bit tiny, you may not notice it right now, but it's there, take a look, he's got an earring, kind of coming down from his jawline into his hair there a little bit. We've already talked about the bandanas and the studded wristband there. On his other hand that hasn't been fully rendered yet, there's a uh, glove. He's got one fingerless glove there, very, very reminiscent of the era. And I'll also, in another layer, add in a whole bunch of little wristbands as well. Like kind of those jelly wristbands that were very popular in the 80s. He can't have nearly enough belts as far as I'm concerned. So I put it on as many belts as I possibly could. And then we finish off the torso going down the legs with the uh, with the jeans. Now, um, I didn't really commit to the jeans right away. I, I kind of scribbled some lines in there to represent something that was going across the uh, thighs. I had two ideas as to how this was gonna work. I was either gonna go with the, the ripped jeans that just were shredded beyond all reckoning, or these are gonna be tights, and I was gonna put in some sort of like a uh, zebra stripe animal print pattern on them. Um, either one of them would have worked for this, but I think at the end I, I decided that the jeans were just gonna be a little bit more fun to draw because of all the little white, you know, threads that I could kind of draw uh, detail-wise, kind of hanging off the jeans and, and selling that element that it was denim. Um, so uh, the next thing you see here is I'm working on that gloved hand that I mentioned a little bit for, before. And, and I, I sometimes struggle with this, so I, I think it might be a, a decent time to kind of break this down. When I'm drawing hands, they can be a little bit difficult for me, and so this is something I tend to focus on because I want to get them to look good, at least to my own eye, uh, but I'm not going to sit there and kind of settle for anything that I don't feel like truly works with the pose that, are, that I'm trying to achieve here. So I went back and forth on how this hand was going to look a couple of times, and you'll see that I kind of threw away one idea and went with another. I, I had this clenched fist, now I'm going with that kind of rocker finger salute type thing. wasn't quite sure where I wanted to put it, so eventually I'll scrap that idea and redraw another hand in another position. But the big thing that I'm doing here, which, which might be a nice little tip for anybody that's trying to kind of struggle with drawing hands or how to draw this in proportion to the body, 
is that you'll notice I draw the hand first. The hand then, once I'm kind of satisfied with what it looks like, will get moved around until I get an idea of where I want to place it in the, in the frame. Um, I'm not really worried about where it connects to the shoulder of the figure yet, I just want to get the hand right first. And once I have the hand sitting where I want it to, then I can just kind of draw a line connecting shoulder to wrist and then draw an arm around it, kind of almost like I'm connecting the pieces of a puzzle together. If you draw the hands first and then bring in the arms later, I think that you'll find that the proportions tend to work out a little bit better because your eye typically wants to put a hand where it belongs, at least, you know, proportionally. And 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 the rest of the arm can kind of be draw, drawn around it to, to kind of solve the puzzle, so to speak. I do this a lot. Uh, with a lot of my figures, so if you ever look at any of my other videos, you'll see that I'll draw hands separate from anywhere else, and then I'll just kind of move it into place and draw the arm around it. It's a good way to kind of get the effect that you're going for, and, and it helps kind of achieve some of the proportional questions that I think that sometimes um, I have when I'm dealing with uh, uh, kind of putting a figure together into some sort of a pose or a stance. Now that I have that together, I'm jumping to the background. So uh, all I've really done here is just draw a loose outline of some background singers. And I didn't really want a lot of detail in this, so I knew that from the get-go, this wasn't gonna be anything I spent a lot of time drawing. Immediately went to Silhouette, made a copy of it, and then I used some distortion tools to kind of move them around a little bit and kind of make it look like that they were um, kind of sitting in the background on a stage. At this point, we move into our coloring stage. Now the coloring on this was really going to be uh, very almost monotone. I, I wanted everything to kind of have something of a red look to it. So the stage lights and everything that's coming off the stage was shining bright red. Um, so you'll see as I put in the lights there, what I'm trying to do is get this background to really kind of fade a little bit. I, I don't want a lot of focus on it. I'm blurring everything out. I'm not putting in detail. I'm not even really drawing in lights. I'm just drawing in the actual just light source itself, the, the luminescence, if you will. And then everything else is the foreground, and that foreground I want to have the detail and the focus, and even a slightly different color scheme. So everything behind is red, but everything in the foreground is going to go with a different color to give us some contrast and help bring that foreground, that figure in the foreground rather, up towards the front there a little bit. Now, as I'm going in and I'm coloring this, you may notice that the flesh uh, tone is a little bit dark, and I, and I think that might bear some mentioning as well. Um, when I'm trying to render something, something of a Caucasian skin tone, um, one of the tricks I kind of go with is try to render it darker than I think that it should be. So I did want somebody here that was going to be rather relatively pale skinned, but I didn't start off that way, knowing that a little bit later when I put in the light source, it's going to make that skin look a little bit lighter once all the light source has been put in. So starting with a darker mid-tone, we'll have, just kind of give you something that you can go to in terms of a lighter tone to get shine and stuff like that. If you start with your flesh tones too light, then the only thing you have left to go to is white for a light source, and that just doesn't really kind of come off very nice. Something I also do when I'm uh, rendering flesh is the red. I mention this a lot of my videos, and this <laughs> apparently is not going to be an exception, but you may notice there's a lot of red in our in Dan Bandana's face here, and, and the red there is to kind of uh, uh, bring out some of that flesh tone that, that, that gives it some, a little bit of life. There's a lot of bl blood that comes to the surface in the cheeks and in the jaw and the nose, so I paint it in there, and even though it looks a little bit gaudy right now, once you get in some of the um, shadows and light sources, all that kind of balances itself out, and it'll give you something of a richer, more lifelike flesh tone. It does kind of bear mentioning, though, and, and I really should point this out, that this is a little bit of unusual of a character in the sense that uh, this guy is actually going to be wearing makeup. It was very... Uh, indicative of the time so so um the lips look a little bit pink but it is because our character is going to be wearing lipstick and, and you know rouge and, and so on and so forth so i did overdo the red a little bit mostly because of that makeup effect i'm looking for now i mentioned the detail here i want to get into it right now because we can see it on the page uh the bandana was a lot of fun to draw but notice how much that little bit of detail really kind of makes everything pop now, I didn't like the red in the bandana here because everything else in the background was red. So eventually I am going to turn it to a blue color. It's really easy to do because I kept all the bandana work on its own layer. So going back and changing the color was really simple because I just was able to pick out that one particular layer and make that change there and have it affect nothing else. But the important thing here was the detail work. All that little filigree and all that little line work was really just the result of kind of zooming in, getting a... Um, 
a reference photo from Google of, of what a bandana looks like traditionally and just trying to get uh, some of the scribbles in there to resemble what I was seeing from my reference photo. Uh, the neck band is an example of that, but certainly that headband as well, that, that big series of circles with all the kind of intertwined white and black lines came from just some reference photos I found on Google of just you know people wearing bandanas uh, uh, generally. That little level of realism kind of helps everything pop and work considering that everything else surrounding it is very kind of simplistic and cartoon uh, in, in terms of a, a drawing style. Now, when I originally did the rendering on this and I had just the line drawing done, I showed it to a couple of friends of mine and they said that this looked very much like Brett Michaels from Poison uh, without any color in it, but just the black and white outline. It, it, it did look a little bit too much like him and I was trying to get away from a specific resemblance. So I, I was really kind of trying to figure out how to change it a little bit. And one of the things I stumbled across was just changing the hair color. So I made sure I stayed away from blonde and went with a dark hair color. In this case, purple, but I could have probably pushed it more into the black zone. But the darker the hair, the more it seemed to get away from that Brent Michaels resemblance. And, and that was kind of ultimately what I was striving for. Now, again, our character is also wearing makeup. So I've got a lot of heavy rouge in there, the pink lipstick. There's the eyeshadow that just put in. But because I wanted to make sure that we were clear that this was a male that we were speaking about, I made sure that I also uh, got a little bit of darkness in around the uh, jawline to, to kind of indicate a five o'clock shadow. I, I think it works. It, it, it helps the, the payoff here a little bit. I didn't want there to be any confusion, despite the fact that 80s hair rock was something of a, a very androgynous time. Um, I wanted to make it just as clear as I possibly could that this was a guy in makeup because that was just the character that I was going for. Light source here was really kind of tricky because there was a lot of light going on. He has light coming from behind him. I have two stage lights shining almost directly on his face as well. So trying to get shadow in here was important, but it was also going to have to be a very limited amount of shadow considering how much light was shining from every direction. So all over his arms and his hair, the bandanas, the front of his chest, even down his jeans, has got some sort of a light source either shining off of it or reflecting off another surface. And it, it can become a little bit difficult to keep track of it all if when you got this many light sources going on, but hopefully it kind of pulled it off in a way that, that, that you know, it, it works, if, even if it's not 100% accurate. So that's about it right here. I kind of put a little bit of a frame on it, add our signature, and we got ourselves a done deal. So Dan Bandana is all set. I hope you liked this little short video. I've got more coming pretty soon, more caricatures as a matter of fact, so make sure you come on back. Don't forget to subscribe and share, and if you can click that like button, that certainly helps me out as well. Hope to see you soon. Have a great day.